Rijk, the Welsh language, one of Europe's oldest languages. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to your learners? Who do you think speaks Welsh? Hello, we're going to do a good day. We're going to do a good day. Yola Chung did anyway, you sing any young Hong Kong at Dwin Shalak and Rag. Annie did we, Dwin Gaithio, two on a bar, Dwin Shalak and Rag. Annie Ruda did we, the Dwin Shalak and Rag. Anna Wee Gwaud, Dwin Tweedig Business for him at Dwin Shalak and Rag. Ashoka here, Dwi, the Mammy I threw Punjabi, and you were in Dusky Gumrag as Doivila Huech. The NOE di Llio Evans, dwi'n dod o lanfair pwll gwi'n gyllgo gerych chi'n robwrt llanti seilio gogo goch, a dwi'n hoffi siarad Cymraeg. The NOE o Betsan, dwi'n lico pasta, fi'n siarad Cymraeg. At the 2011 census, 562,000 people in Wales, 19% of the population, described themselves as being Welsh speakers. So roughly, one in five. However, when other language skills are considered, reading, writing and understanding Welsh, the percentage rises to 27%. Other surveys have estimated that around half the population of Wales has some knowledge of Welsh. Welsh speakers are not restricted to the rural areas of Western North Wales. Far from it. Most Welsh speakers live in urban settings, in the towns and cities of South East and North East Wales. Welsh speakers are getting younger by the minute. Due to the phenomenal growth of Welsh within the education system, a growing percentage of our young people are speaking both of our nation's languages. Welsh speakers are a diverse group and come from all kinds of religious, ethnic and cultural backgrounds. My dad's Scottish and so is my brother and my mum's English and as far as I'm aware I'm the only Welsh person ever in my family. I started speaking Welsh when I was a baby and I've been speaking it all my life. I'm Dad and Dwi, Dwi'n Hoffi Siarag Gymraeg. I'm Dad and Dwi, Dwi'n Hoffi Siarag Gymraeg. I'm Dad and Dwi'n Hoffi Siarag Gymraeg. The biggest part of my life is teaching Kung Fu, so it's only natural for me to teach through the medium of Welsh. I told them we communicate in two languages, Punjabi and Welsh. The Tanya, Adrian Hoffi Puskota, Adrian Sharad Kamraig. Dwi'n fod yn ffodus iawn mod i wedi llwyddo i fyw a cael fa addysg trwy gyfnod y Gymraeg yn gyfan gwbl. I come from England. I was born in Croydon. Rydw i'n falc iawn i fod yn Gymrys. So hello to me, dwi'n hoffi siarad Gymraeg. Na si gael yng Ngenyn, Hong Kong, tra'n un tŵf yn un blentyn, o'n un siarad cantonis o'r dad a'r mam yn siarad Cymraeg o fi. Coming from England, I always wanted to prove to myself that I was allowed to say that I was Welsh. And I thought it was really important to be able to speak the language of my country. My own privilege when I can address somebody in Welsh, it makes me feel happier. Today, more and more people are coming home to Welsh. The Welsh language has gained much public support. It's grown in visibility and status. But things were not always that way. The surprising thing is that we still speak Welsh at all. My granddad moved down to South Wales for work in the coal mine, brought his family with him, which was my dad and his older brother and sister. My father wasn't allowed to speak Welsh when he went to school. When he went to school, he was made fun of for speaking Welsh. They made him stand on the table and speak Welsh because they'd never heard Welsh before. And he was banned from speaking Welsh. Over the centuries, so many were cajoled to turn their backs on Welsh with promises of a brighter future. So there were a number of statements saying that the Welsh would never get on in life because they were bound to the Welsh language. And so the emphasis was on the need to use English instead. Because if they spoke it, 
they weren't going to do as well in their exams because all the exams are in English, so he had to learn to speak English. This is an experience we share with speakers of other minority languages throughout Europe. During the medieval ages, after Edward I's conquest of 1282, Wales was practically a monoglot Welsh-speaking society. Everybody spoke Welsh, bar some burgesses within the walled towns of the fortified boroughs, set up by Edward I. These soldiers and merchants were planted there by the Crown in order to develop trade and gain economic control of the surrounding areas. Markets and fairs were held at these towns. Carmarthen, Conwy, Denby, Cardiff, Pembroke, Rumaris and Caerphilly. So in these castle towns, the language was, was Norman French or English. Uh, whereas in the whole of the rest of, the way, uh, of Wales, Welsh was the, the, the language spoken by pretty much everybody. After the failure of the Glyndwr revolt in the uh, early 15th century, a series of laws were introduced which made um, Welsh people and Welsh speakers even more second-class citizens. You know, they weren't allowed to hold offices under the Crown and so on. The ban on using Welsh for public duties was confirmed by the Acts of Union under Henry VIII. This meant that Welsh could no longer be used as an administrative language anywhere in England or Wales. The Acts of Union under Henry VIII institutionalised this division of, of language, with English being the language of the law and Welsh not being allowed in courts and any, any old customs which were to do with the Welsh language or Welsh law were gradually abolished. Whereas the Welsh laws of Howell, Howell Tha, Howell the Good, had served Wales well for 600 years, English was now the language of justice, or if you couldn't speak English, the language of injustice. If you wanted to get on in the world, you needed to be able to speak English. Welsh was more and more being regarded as a second-class kind of language. It was fine for farmers in the marketplace, it was fine for ordinary people in the tavern, but it wasn't what you needed in order to get on in the world. Although Henry's daughter, Elizabeth I, authorised the translation of a Welsh Bible, published in 1588, an act that proved to be a great boon for the language, the 18th century saw increasing linguistic tensions between the Anglican Church of England and the emerging non-conformists, who were in the main Welsh-speaking. The following century saw a mass exodus from the church and non-conformist chapels mushroomed throughout the Welsh landscape. It was declared that Welsh should be the language of the Bible, the language of scripture, the language of religion. That gave it a status. It gave it an official status, public status, that it wouldn't have had otherwise. So in a way, it did help counteract the effects of the Acts of Union. It gave a psychological boost. However, things came to a head and a royal commission was established in 1847 to look into the state of education in Wales. Three English lawyers toured Wales, collecting evidence and dutifully concluded in their blue leather-bound report that the Welsh language is a vast drawback to Wales and a manifold barrier to the moral progress and commercial prosperity of the people. It is not easy to overestimate its evil effects. This infamous episode was duly called Brad y Llyfreglesion, the treachery of the blue books. English education was the order of the day, and Welsh was not to be spoken. The blue books in particular have thrown a very long shadow over the last 150 years. The majority of people, the ordinary people, the common folk, the wherein, would have uh, internalised the ideas and the concepts and uh, that were in that particular report and thought of themselves, unfortunately, as second-class citizens within the British state at that time. The 19th century saw urban industrialisation, rural poverty and migration to the New World. The early 20th century saw the Great War, the Great Depression of the 1930s, and an exodus of Welsh speakers from the South Wales Valleys looking for employment over the border in England. All these social and economic trends, along with the psychological legacy left by the early history, 
much weakened the position of Welsh in Wales. Whereas there were a million Welsh speakers in Wales at the beginning of the 20th century, by 1951, their numbers had fallen to just over 700,000, 28.9% of the population, and they continued falling. Something had to be done. <laughs>